In this lesson, we continue our discussion of first order switch circuits by examining circuits that contain sources, resistors, and one inductor. The systematic method for analyzing a switch circuit with DC sources and one inductor is similar to the method we use for circuits with a single capacitor. First, we determine the current in the inductor before the switch changes positions. To do this, we use the fact that an inductor behaves like a short in a steady state DC circuit. And because the voltage across an inductor is proportional to the derivative of the current through it, that current cannot change instantly, because if it did, it would result in infinite voltage. Therefore, the current through the inductor before the switch changes position will be the same at the instant the switch is changed. At the time the switch is changed, T equals zero, we replace the inductor with a current source that provides the initial current, and then solve for the initial condition for the desired voltage or current. Next, we solve for the final value for the desired voltage or current by examining the circuit in steady state with the switch in its new position, and again replacing the inductor with a short. Finally, we evaluate the equivalent resistance for the circuit as seen through the inductor's terminals, and use this resistance to determine the time constant for the circuit which is the ratio of the inductance to the equivalent resistance. Then, just like we did for capacitive circuits, the desired voltage or current after the switch has been changed is its final value plus the product of the difference between the initial and final values times e to the negative t over tau. As an example, let's look at this circuit with two resistors, a current source, and one inductor. The de desired signal is the current through the inductor, and the switch is initially open and then shut at time t equals zero. Before the switch is shut, we can replace the inductor with a short and solve for the current by observing that all of the current will flow through the short, so the current i t is equal to the source current i sub s when t is less than zero. Next we'll look at the circuit at the time that the switch is closed. To do this, we'll replace the inductor with a current source that provides its current at t equals zero, and because i of t is the current through the inductor, its initial value will also be i sub s. Then, in steady state with the switch closed and the inductor replaced by a short, all of the current will flow through the closed switch, and the final value for the current through the inductor will be zero. Finally, we'll turn off the independent source and determine the equivalent resistance as seen by the inductor, which in this case is R1 in parallel with R2. And the corresponding time constant is the inductance value divided by this equivalent resistance. Then we can use the initial value, the final value, and the time constant to determine the current for t greater than or equal to zero, which will be I sub s e to the negative t times R equivalent divided by the inductance. Now let's take a look at another circuit that has a voltage source, three resistors, and one inductor. The switch is initially closed and then opened at T equals zero, and we want to determine the voltage drop across the inductor and the resistor with resistance R2. For T less than zero, we view the inductor as a short and its current can be evaluated as the voltage V sub S divided by the resistances R2 plus R3. Then at the moment the switch is open, we replace the inductor with a current source with the current through the inductor at the moment just before the switch was opened, which was V sub S over R2 plus R3. And then by using Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can determine that the voltage drop V of t at t equals zero is negative I sub L zero, the initial current through the inductor, times R1 plus R3. Then in steady state, the voltage source is isolated from the rest of the circuit, and the voltage drop will be zero. Finally, the equivalent resistance as seen by the inductor after the switch is opened is the sum of the three resistances that are in series, and the resulting time constant is the ratio of the inductance to this equivalent resistance. 
and we can use that to determine the voltage for all times after the switch is opened.